It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The NFL playoffs are here. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Official sportsbook partner of the NFL. What is going on everybody and welcome back to your source for fantasy hockey news and degenerate gambling breakdowns. It's a locked on fantasy hockey podcast. We're here for a big time Tuesday edition where we're taking a big time look into what's happening with the Ottawa Senators. It's a special crossover episode with the locked on Senators podcast hosts and you know we got big time bets rolling out the door baby. It's a big time episode. Thank you for joining us. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You heard the music and you know what time it is. It's time for the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. It's a big time Tuesday edition, like I said, and today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every single day. We appreciate that and wouldn't be anywhere without the support of all our listeners. Today is loaded with news and analysis coming out of the world of the Ottawa Senators. We have the Locked On Senators host joining us today, Steele. I'm excited to talk Sens. We have big-time bets coming up at the end of the show. I don't know about you, but Ross, Brandon, it's going to be a good episode with those guys, and I'm excited to talk Sens. I'm excited, too. You know, you and I were big, big advocates for the Ottawa Senators in the offseason and them being a little bit better this season. And now, right. obviously, it hasn't turned out that way. Josh Norris, the big news today with the injury out for the remainder of the season. We're going to get the Locked On Senators guys on the podcast right now to talk about what's going on with their future, the remainder of the season, get some insight on the Ottawa Senators. We're here with the Locked On Sens boys, Ross Levy-10 and Brandon Piller. Thank you guys so much for being here. Obviously, um, some tough news this morning with the Josh Norris injury out for the remainder of the season, uh, having shoulder surgery. So definitely some tough news to wake up to. And I know Flip has some questions for you guys, uh, revolving a lot of things, especially Josh Norris. But Waking up this morning, what was your guys' initial reaction to, you know, seeing that news that he's out for the remainder of the season? Well, funny story, actually, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll lead into Pills. He can give his angle, too. But we, we jumped on the call, and we had planned it because DJ Smith, after Saturday's loss, made it clear he's changing the lines. He needs a worker on every line. So we were half expecting to wake up and see Parker Kelly on the first line, Austin Watson playing <laughs> top six. Yep. We needed to wait to record until that came out. So we wake up. And another worker, a first-round pick, Ridley Gregg, any long-term yeah. dynasty fantasy league guys, you got to be happy if, if you have him on your roster right now because he's getting a top-six look with the Brinkett and Giroux right away. But mm. we said, hey, Josh Norris didn't look good on the bench in that third period. He sat on the bench, didn't play the second half of the third. And is this a domino move where Ridley Gregg gets up, everyone's looking at, uh, at him, and then Josh Norris news comes out about 20 minutes later. It was devastating, but my laptop died right away. Mm. So I, I couldn't see. Pilsy just saw me leave, and I come back on, but Pilsy can't see me yet, and he's just shaking his head. He looks so <laughs> mad. I thought he was mad at me for my computer dying. But then I go on Twitter, and I see the news came across. Right, It was that look right there, just the head shake. <laughs> just like an air of disappointment. So I thought I was the one doing it. I would have preferred. I would have taken that bullet if it meant Josh Norris yep. didn't have to. But sad news, of course, only came back for the three games. But this guy's a gamer, man. Like, he scores goals, but he's a two-way guy. Mm -hmm. He is a, a huge loss and a huge piece of the Sens. Hey, what do you think, Pilsy? I know uh, this has obviously been a head-shaking season for you guys yeah. in general. Maybe not so much your initial reaction, but you mentioned – the gamingness, you know, his two way ability, and how much does this really mean to the overall success of the Sens is maybe my first question for you. 
Josh Norris being out the rest of the season you're referring to? Yeah, I mean, this is a really interesting thing, guys, because Josh Norris talked to five different doctors when he had his initial shoulder injury, and one of them did mention that he thinks it's okay to rehab and he won't need surgery. Presumably, that means the other four suggested he went surgery. Josh said, I really trust this guy. I want to play. I don't want to shut my season down. The team ultimately from my understanding, put it in his hands more than anything. He was able to make that choice, whether they supported it or, or what happened behind the scenes. We're not entirely sure, but this was a, a decision that a lot of effort and research was put into. They decided, all right, let's go with the rehab instead of the surgery. Cause if you have the surgery right away, you're shut down for the rest of the season. So he's yeah. rehabbing. It's been months. He was injured October 22nd and he didn't play till just uh, this past week. So mm-hmm. quite a lot of time to rehab, they finally felt he was ready, and he comes in for, what, Ross, three games? His third game yeah. he was done, and uh, you could see it on the bench. He he knew he was done. The trainer's talking to DJ Smith, and the real issue is, of course, you don't want to lose Josh Norris, a guy that scored 36 goals in just 66 games last season. He's an absolute stud. He's a sniper, and you mentioned it, Flip. He's also a good two-way guy, one of their best defensive centers. He, but- scored, he scored the only goal of their game. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, he scored the only goal of the game. Uh, DJ Smith didn't have him there taking face off. Giroux wins the face off. Norris, quick snipe right in. And mm-hmm. that's how he scores his goal. And then later on, he shut down. But the issue is obviously you want that guy in your top six. But what it did is it slotted the Ottawa Senators' centers in their perfect spots. Tim Stutzla is now. Yeah undebatably the number one guy in Ottawa. He's basically point. a point-per-game guy. He plays well with Brady Kachuk, the captain. He just signed the biggest deal in franchise history. Tim Stutzla is this team's number one center. That put Josh Norris perfectly in the number two spot, but more Agreed. importantly, it places rookie Shane Pinto in the yeah. number three center role, which is ideal mm. for him because he had to play uh, second-line center for quite a while. And things weren't clicking. And you know what? That's okay. To be a young centerman in the NHL is very difficult. So no one was kind of harping on Pinto saying it's his fault. This team's not getting going because he wasn't supposed to be thrown in this role. He was supposed to be your third line center. And that makes Mark Castle like your fourth line center. And everything (laughs) lined up perfectly. But now with Josh Norris out, Shane Pinto's going to have to elevate his game again. But he's going to stay on that third line center. We're going to see Ridley Gregg take over that second line spot and talk about being put in a position to succeed guys. You're yeah. Ridley Gregg. It's your first <laughs> NHL debut. And who do you get put on a line with? You get put on the second line with Alex to a two time 40 goal scorer and your childhood hero in Claude Giroux Huge. on both of your wings. So good story. We're obviously excited for Ridley Gregg, but the loss of Josh Norris can't be understated, not only for what he does specifically, but how it shapes this team's lineup. There is a lot of ways we could take this conversation, and that's why we needed to have you two on. And clearly, you do yeah. know what you're talking about. And if you're feeling it, guys, make sure you go check out the guys at Locked On Sends on YouTube and across all platforms. You find your favorite content. Hit them a follow and a subscribe because you guys know what you're talking about when it comes to this team. And I'm not just saying that because we're having you on the show. It's true. And when you watch you guys day to day, I can feel the pain and the expectations that came with this season as fans and, of course, as guys who cover this team. Team. But when I look at the stats, guys, you know, special teams, pretty good goals for not good. You know, it's I can't really put my finger on why exactly this team hasn't succeeded to the expectations. Maybe were a bit too high, but they shouldn't be as poor as they are, in my opinion. Yeah. And on paper, there's still so much to like in the future and otherwise. So I need to ask you and maybe start with you, Ross, is. Where do you put your fit? Who is to blame this season? And I'm not trying to play the blame game because it's boring. Our listeners who need fantasy takes need to know what's going on with this Ottawa Senators team, Josh Norris or otherwise. What's going on with the Sens, man? Well, there's two two big things, and I don't want to leave, leave Pilsy with, with nothing but breadcrumbs, but the two main reasons, <laughs> five-on-five scoring is atrocious. Mm-hmm. They have more five-on-five goals than exactly one team in the NHL, and that team's the Chicago Blackhawks. They've Yeesh. got four less goals at even strength than the, than the Anaheim Ducks, and that's 30-31-32 in the league. So when mm-hmm. you're at the bottom there, you're already struggling, and I think a big reason for that, Pilsy mentioned Shane Pinto having to move up to the second-line center. That left such a hole in the bottom six, and then Matthew Joseph is out for 16 games. 
Tyler yeah. Mott still out. That's your entire third line gone for a 20-game yeah. um, sample size when you consider Pinto being off that line in an elevated capacity. Right. So I think that's a huge, huge issue. And the other one is shut the game off after 40 minutes if the Sens mm-hmm. are losing. Right. This year, when the Sens are losing after two periods, they're 1-19-2. and two. They have points in three games. And, and it's not a stat that you're ever going to be 500 or better in, but like – You got to win some games when you're trailing after two. In the DJ Smith era, this is a 255-game sample size. The Senators have eight wins in 119 games when they're trailing after two periods. It's just a complete shut it down. One of them, fellas, it was 5-1 against the Toronto Maple Leafs. There you go. Hey. Hey. You're talking about a team that just cannot win when they're trailing after two periods. (laughs) And it comes down to the style that DJ plays. Very dump and chase heavy True. and very like hard on the four check and not a whole lot of, hey, we're going to possess the puck in the offensive zone. It's a lot of just one and done cycles. And that's a big problem why third periods have been been a problem for them this year. Is you agree with that, Pilsy, or uh, you got some other takes? For me personally, like I think obviously the blue line needs to be addressed a little bit. But what do you think might be going wrong with this team right now? <laughs> No, Ross hit the the priority is the five on five even strength yeah. goal scoring. Like it's just been absolutely atrocious. Especially and given all the talent you guys have in that top six. Yeah. Come on now. That's the thing. Like you've got Brady <laughs> Kachuk, Tim Stutzla. Both of those guys are basically at a point per game pace. Claude Giroux, yeah. you might think he's slowing down. Not at all. He's still producing. It's Drake so Batherson, good. he's putting up points. Alex Debrinkat, maybe not scoring the goals you thought a guy of his sniping caliber would, but he's still producing as well. Mm-hmm. But yep. you know what? We're a goalie-friendly show. Ross and I uh, tout ourselves as that. But the goaltending simply has not been good enough. And we were under the impression that having a guy like Forsberg, a guy that uh, really picked up a lot of the slack for this team last year and was a warrior in net. Mm -hmm. Like, he had over six wins when he makes 40-plus saves. So this guy was getting it done. And then you bring in... A veteran guy like Cam Talbot, he was an all-star last year. Check Cam Talbot, how he finished the regular season with the Minnesota Wild. I think it was something like 15 wins in his last 18 games or something absolutely insane like that. He won 15 straight to end off uh, his time. Yeah, it was wild what he did, no pun intended, uh, when he was playing with the Minnesota Wild (laughs) there. there. But um, the fact they put those goalies together and you're like, okay, we don't have a prototypical number one starter and a, and a traditional backup. These guys are going to battle for their nights and we're going to have a 1A, 1B system. Awesome. That sounds mm. great if you're an Ottawa Senators yeah. fan. Finally, you get some veteran stability in the crease. That just hasn't been the case. And I think to start the year, they were okay. There's been ups, there's been downs. But as we look at it today, guys, Cam Talbot, 11, 13, and one record, 295 goals against a 903 yeah. save percentage. Yep. Forsberg, yeah. 8, 10, and 2, a 3, 3, 4 goals against, and an 8, 99 save percentage. So neither of these guys is where you want them to be. Pierre Dorian mentioned at the start of the season, they believe for this team to have success, they needed a combined save percentage of uh, 0.917. Ooh. They're not even close. Like, they're (laughs) barely above a combined 900 save percentage here. So for a team that struggles to score 5-on-5 when your goalies aren't able to bail you out in tough spots... You're going to struggle, and that's what's happening to the Ottawa Senators. And just Most- quickly on, on that note, too, like with Cam Talbot, some of the games he's played has been exceptional. You might remember the one around Christmas where they beat the Boston Bruins. The Bruins had 19 shots yeah. in the third period. He was ridiculous in that game. Mm-hmm. And since then, he's rocking an 820 save percentage in eight games. Like the sample yeah. size is way too big for him to be, be struggling this much. And it's just, it's really tough to see because you know the talent's there, but there's games where he just doesn't look like he knows where the puck is. He has yeah. no rebound control, and it, it's it's really tough. Yeah, one win in his last five starts and an 870 save percentage in January. It's just when they needed him, and and they they have, he hasn't been, been there. And when Pilsy mentioned a tandem, that's what we thought too. But mm. Talbot was hurt at the start of the year, had the broken ribs. Forsberg comes in. And plays like 10 games in a row. Then Talbot comes back. And then they ride him for 10 or 12 games. And it just mm. felt like they weren't really sharing the net. Even though the yeah. games played might look pretty even. 
There is, again, a lot of ways you could break this down. We're going to talk about some fantasy angles with the boys from the Locked On Sens. Coming up after the break, you want their insight on some of these young senators that may be getting a look in that top six. We alluded to it at the top of the show. We're going to get to big-time bets at the end of the show, but we got to talk about our new partnership with FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, and we are hyped up and excited for our new betting partner for Locked On because they are the number one sports book in america that's fanduel and if you're new to fanduel that's even better they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy i don't know what else you need to hear people new customers join today get started with 150 bucks in free bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet at fanduel just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel has all of your favorite bets from the money line to the point spreads to the player props Plus, you can even combine your bets for a bigger chance at a payout with the same game parlay. You know that's where Steele and I like to sprinkle that money, so make sure you're tapped into FanDuel for our, the, all the latest. And the app is safe and secure and easy to use for everyone out there. Football fans, do not miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 free dollars free in free bets, win or lose at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book of the NFL. This is Dane Lewis from the Locked On Stars podcast, here to let you know the following message brought to you by Discover. Did you know that you could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection, the latest innovation from Discover? Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data. And they'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app and see terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you go hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. Also, make sure you go check out the Locked On Sends as well. The boys Mm -hmm. are doing great things over there. And thank you so much again for being here today and having all the insight with what's going on with this fantasy team. And uh, I know, Brandon, you talked about Claude Giroux a little bit. I do want to talk about Claude Giroux and the future that he has with his team and the impact as well. But I do want to start off with uh, a couple of the young guys and you know maybe something that could happen in the near future, a mm. possible trade to address some of the issues. Like I said, maybe something on the blue line to kind of help Thomas Chabot. And just looking at the team itself, they have, you know, the Ottawa Senators have five players on entry-level contracts right now. That's going to change, obviously, next year when Tim Stutzler is making over $8 million a year. And you've also got 11 players who are 25 years old or younger. So you got a lot of young guys on this team, and rightfully mm-hmm. so. They're great hockey talents. But I know earlier on in the season, there was some traction between the Ottawa Senators and the Arizona Coyotes, maybe for a trade with Jakob Chikrin. I know the, the price for Chikrin was very unrealistic what they were asking for. But is that something that you think the Ottawa Senators as an organization should maybe revisit and uh, potentially look to trade one of their young guys to acquire somebody on the blue line that can help Thomas Shabbat because he can't do it all himself. Bilzi, is your still answer on Chikrin two letters long? (laughs) <laughs> uh, correct I mean if if you would have asked uh, that would be N-O uh, no I'm I'm out on Chikrin just because if you would have asked me when uh, last time we talked um, just before the season had started yeah maybe that makes sense because Sens fans our heads were filled with promise it was a great offseason yeah. all Pierre Dorian needed is one defenseman mm. that can play in the top four on the right side Kenzie Weger. Yeah, I mean, that would have been nice. Yeah, maybe John, it doesn't John have Marino to be Jakob Chikrin. Maybe it's another defenseman you're looking at. But is that something the, the, the Senators should maybe revisit, maybe trading one of these young guys that, yes, they obviously they want to keep them. But if that means taking a bigger step on the blue line, because you already have your top six group that once they do start going and finding that chemistry, you're going to need some more help on the blue or, line. Or, so like you guys Chikrin. said, maybe address the bottom six. Is there a deal in, yeah. the, in the future for this team? I think what Steele is really getting at. Yeah, and the only reason I brought up Mackenzie Weger's name is that there was talks yeah. at the draft right after Debrinket. Yeah. Like, is, is Pierre Dorian going to leave the draft with Debrinket and Weger? Yeah. Obviously, Weger <laughs> goes in a blockbuster deal. The Sens aren't matching yeah. it with yeah. their own Kachuk. I promise you that. So um, <laughs> you kind of got to leave that where it is. But mm-hmm. uh, I'll let Pilsy f- kind of finish his point there. But I think we just have to qualify every potential move with the Senators is that this team is actively for sale yeah. and yeah. is likely to be sold soon. How much term and money can you add to a payroll when you're in that financial transition that's kind of the 
And we talk about that with the coach, the GM, everybody. There is that kind of, not cloud, because it's it's excitement, but there yeah. is that one caveat that we have to remember. Yeah, and I think the big thing with the Chikrin deal that kind of sends fans got scared off with is the rumor was Shane Pinto had to be involved yeah. in that deal. And right. You guys heard of what I had to say about Shane Pinto. He is the perfect third-line center, and Mm -hmm. I don't think the Ottawa Centers Mm -hmm. are interested in doing that. Um, To kind of help you guys out uh, with giving you an idea of where the Sens have been looking is Pierre Dorian, I don't know if he just wants to head to L.A. in January. (laughs) It beats Ottawa, and he's just going out there to hang out. But Mm. he has been actively following the L.A. Kings and scouting their games. And the names that are... Yeah, the names that are rumored there, guys, are uh, Matt Roy, who's got two yeah. years left at 3.15. He's 27 years old, right-hand shot D. And yep. Sean Walker, 28 years old, two okay. years left at 2.65. Two, so those are the types of guys the Ottawa Centers are wanting because at I this point, getting a rental is it, – it's just pointless. Like you're throwing, you're throwing picks away. You're, this team has no chance of making the playoffs. It's, I, I wish I could tell you guys different. I wish I could spin zone this, but mm. there's no way. <laughs> so the only deal the Ottawa centers are going to do are guys that are under, under 30, over 25, under 30 in that range. Some more veteran yeah. guys that have term. They're not going to spend assets to get a guy that's just going to say, hey, I don't think things are going to work out for me here in Ottawa. And he's going to walk UFA. That's something they can't be doing. Yeah. One thing we're very nervous about, though, guys, those would be kind of minor deals, right? Like those aren't For huge sure. names. Neither of those are blockbusters. But mm-hmm. Ross mentioned it. The sale of this team is looming over. And uh, at first, that was supposed to be a kind of sunny, bright uh, yeah, thing. Exciting. But now, yeah, and now it's almost like a dark cloud a little bit, only yep. because. What this does is this turns up the heat on manager Pierre Dorian and head coach DJ Smith all the way up because you know new ownership is going to come in and they're going to say, wait, this general manager and coach have been here for years and they've been one of the worst teams in the league and they keep Mm. getting new contracts. We're not going to do that. So we're concerned that Pierre Dorian might be out there trying to make a save my job type of move. And he's going to say... I don't care what happens with this team uh, coming up if I don't have a job here. So I'm going to push mm. all my uh, chips on the table. We're going to go out and we're going to spend assets to get a guy like Seth Jones, who they were rumored Whoa. to be in. A guy like Matthias Ekholm that they've been linked to. Guys Yeesh. like that, which just does not make sense for where oh, this yeah. team is right no. now. But if you're a general manager and new ownership comes in, you can say, hey, look, I tried to get a top uh, right-hand <laughs> defenseman. I tried. I'm, I'm doing what I can for this team. So yeah. that's where it becomes a little tricky is every single thing that this team does is going to be done with the implications that new owners are coming in and they're coming in very soon. What a difference six to eight <laughs> months make, crazy, not even guys. six months. Let's call it four mm-hmm. months. When we came on your show at the start of the season, ready to talk top three in the <laughs> division, ready to talk, maybe returning the page here. We were ready to put the crown on Dorian. Now we're talking about him saving his job. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is what happens when you don't produce on the ice. And in my opinion, you have more than enough pieces, even in this Atlantic division, to be in the mix for at least the top, you know, at least in the wild card bubble mix. But hey, guys, you know, I got to get back to the fantasy angles in a sec. Ross, what were you trying to hit me with before I get some fantasy questions off the hip here? I was just going to say that in terms of what this team's built, and it's almost to your point, Flip, where you're talking about what's the next step. Mm. And Jack, our, our boy Jack, Radio City Jack on Twitter. He's always a great follow. We have a sponsor with uh, Shawarma Palace, the best. There you go. Mafia. Shout out to Shawarma Palace. We walk in, and this guy's listening to our podcast in line. He turns around <laughs> and says, what the heck are you guys doing here? So, <laughs> he made a great point on Twitter, though, yesterday. said, the Sens have drafted. They had 11 picks in 2020. The fifth, by the way, is Ridley Gregg about to make his NHL debut less than two years later. That's pretty solid. However, when you have all these draft picks, at some point, don't you have to package some prospects to move? They can't all play. And now we're seeing Igor Sokolov's about to be an RFA this year. Why are you not giving him a look or Mm. having like a guy like Roby Arventi? Like they have all these players. Like at some point, you have to do a quantity for quality trade to take the next step. And it almost feels like, Pierre Dorian with his scouting background has kind of fallen in love with his own prospects too much. <laughs> Every team and, and their fan bases too will always overhype the prospects, right? But Definitely. at some point, you got to turn them into NHL players. And I think, Flip, that's kind of the other 
part of this juggling act that mm. Pierre Dorian was doing. Save my job, make the team better, and also have a solid future as well. That is a very nice segue into my last question for you guys. You know, thank you again for joining us. And make sure you go out there and check out the Locked On Sends across all platforms you find your favorite content. But it's how you guys sometimes tweet out, again, on Twitter, very good follow, Locked On Sends. You promo some of these guys that you have your eye on, you know, down in what the AHL, what is it, Bennington? Where what, yeah. where are they playing these days? <laughs> There's Belleville now. Just down Belleville, the floor. there you go. I knew there was something there in a B. But You're close. Listen, it you used to be promo- big- it used to be Binghamton. So Thank not, you. There you, you see, I'm not too far off the mark. 2011 Calder <laughs> Cup champs. Hey, there. Get your T-shirt out next episode, please. <laughs> um, you guys do a great job of promoting the young guys. And that's where my head goes. You mentioned Greg. He's going to get a huge option. This is the fantasy show. We need to give our listeners a little bit of a take. Aside from Greg, aside from obviously Pinto and the obvious characters that are in the mix in Ottawa now, yeah. Jake Sanderson and what have you. Who's one guy, if I was going to, you were going to tell our listeners, it might not be this year. Maybe it's a 10 games at the end of the year because we know this season might be in the bag already for the Sens. Who are you looking at for maybe that next guy who could make an impact? I'm not saying 40 goals. I'm not saying a top line guy, but just a next guy in the mix in the farm system to make an impact. Pelsey? Well, if you're passing it off to me, I'll kind of piggyback on what you're saying there, Ross. And that guy is Igor Sokolov. This guy mm-hmm. was a uh, draft pick in 2020, part of that a second rounder in 2020. He was part of that massive kind of franchise altering draft that the Sens had in 2020. And he was drafted as an overager. He led the queue in goals scored that year. So he was yep. producing at a big rate uh, what you want for a guy his age in the juniors. He comes to Belleville. He continues to produce. He's leading the team in points this year. He actually has the franchise record of points as a Belleville or a goal, sorry, as a Belleville Senator, very close to reaching that point mark as well. But we talked, uh, we're good friends with him. He's been on the show a bunch of times and we talked to him uh, a few weeks ago and his coach, Troy Mann. And he was saying that Igor was frustrated watching all these other guys, these kind of veteran fringe guys get called up and he's Mm. not getting called up. He's producing, but The thing is, he needs to work on his game all around. And as far as fantasy-wise goes, this is a guy, when he does kind of figure out the full package of his game and does get called up, he's got a hard shot. He's a big body. He's someone that I think possibly could get a look on the third line playing with Shane Pinto and Matthew Joseph if Mm. and hopefully when he gets called up. Um, And he's someone that we have a lot of faith in. It's just he hasn't been able to get that chance to go up to the NHL. So... If I were looking at fantasy options and maybe a guy that could break out and uh, be called up to the NHL, Igor Sokolov is where I would look. And a great, a great reason, too. I'm just going to follow up on Igor quickly as well. 38 points in 39 games this year in the AHL. He's 22 years old. When he was drafted, he was like 240 pounds. He's cut that down to 215. Wow. A player wow. comparable that I'd have with him, and not just because they both – well, I guess one's not even Russian, but just have the Russian name. He's a lot like Arthur Kaliev, where it's like okay. you could put him on a power wow. play and he's just going to score from that mm-hmm. that same spot. Uh, Lots to like about led, that. Led the queue in goals. He had 46 goals in 52 games. Not bad. Uh, but all kind of just wrist shot, can beat guys. And what I love about him, too, is his competitiveness. He's basically uh, an adopted East Coaster from living out in Cape mm. Breton. He's in that. Good Cape Breton boy. He's in that group, man. He's out there with Batherson, Marshan, Crosby, and McKinnon love in the it. summer. And you love know that that's got a little extra kick when he sees these champs come in and what yeah. it takes for their work ethic. So, Crushing uh, vodka like, seltzers at the bar all night. <laughs> that's it, man. Yeah. Well, Millsy met up with him in Halifax, and yeah. he wouldn't even have a beer. He's like, let's get a coffee, man. I- I'm yeah. doing okay. fun. So, he's got to get. He's got to crack the love NHL, it. and then he can get it. Get mix in the seltzers. There you go. Uh, yeah, hundred um, percent, dude. A lot of their kids are already in the show like that. Yeah. yeah. That's why that, like, that, hey, like maybe so that's much. just it right there. Like that's and that's an answer and something to pay attention to because obviously we know the Pintos of the world were what you guys were waiting mm-hmm. on. And now unfortunately yeah. you're dealt this hand that the team is in a bit of flux and what you were expecting to happen. Now they're now we're talking trades, now we're talking Dorian, maybe selling off pieces. It's a stressful time for you guys. Yeah, no doubt. Like I'll I'll give another one the friends of our show, and it's an easy punchline because of how they reached in the draft. But Tyler Boucher still has plenty of upside in fantasy over the years. He's mm. gonna play on an NHL power play. He's gonna be a net front presence, and he's gonna learn from Brady Kachuk. So who else better yeah, with sense around the net? So I still think he could be a 15, 18 any goal guy in the NHL. 
So he's just got to stay healthy, man. Like he got hurt in that Canada USA game, still out with a dislocated shoulder. So I'll give him a little love. I'll say Tyler Boucher a little bit further. And then, you know what? We're all Canadians here. We'll give some love to Zach Ostapchuk, a a second round pick from 2021. And he's really elevated his stock. He just got traded to where I'm living right now in Winnipeg. Complete wagon. This team in juniors, 36 and five on the year. They're the number one team in Canada right now. So I think he's a guy who could kind of be that, Nick Paul type player where he's going to produce every once in a while, but big body power forward with soft hands. But I'm with Pilsy though. We, we admit it. We're as biased as possible. You come on our show. You're mm-hmm. good to us. We'll be good to you. Igor Sokolov's our guy. There you go. Hey, fans in Winnipeg this year, hitting the <laughs> sauce hard for the boys in the, you know, in the Ooh. minor team. So steel hit these boys with one more question and we got to take it to bills to bets to pay these bills. Yeah, uh, just yeah. One real quick final question. This one's for you, Ross, because I know you're a big Claude Giroux fan, and you had some uh, yep. some hot yep. takes with him reaching 80 points, getting to a thousand points by the end of the regular season. I believe he needs 37 more points in the last 36 games of the season. But for me, yep. Claude Giroux's been the highlight uh, so far this season for the Senators. Like like I mentioned, you guys have so many young guys and so much talent, and now that he's 35 years old, he's you know 45 points on this. 40, 40 points in 46 games on the season, which is truly amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of impact and value does he bring both, A, to the organization to kind of lead these young guys, but also fantasy-wise that he's still getting it done at 35 years old? It's awesome, man. We gave him the best compliment you can give a player in the Ottawa Senators. He reminded me of Daniel Alfredson on the right. ice. Like, yeah. Yeah. A short right winger with an unreal slap shot just brings his teammates into the battle. And how about uh, those wingers that win faceoffs all the time are so funny to me. Ottawa has two of them because Brady snaps them back on the left side. Yeah. And then when Giroux's on his strong side at the right, he's third in the league right now in faceoffs. He's got like 60% center. of his draws this year. It's impressive stuff. Yeah. And he takes a ton of them, man. He, he's he's taking a ton of draws. I actually got yeah. the number right in front of me here. Uh, yeah, he's snapping back. He's got uh, 600 faceoffs under his belt at 61% wow. this year. 61%. And the only thing with fantasy v- value for him is the Sens have him on the second power play unit right now. Yeah, but I yeah. see that kind of tongue-in-cheek because when Brady Kachuk plays all two minutes, which he started to do more and more now, you could Jeez. make the argument that that's actually their top power play unit. Yes, they've got to Brinkett, Giroux, Pinto, and Sanderson. Yeah. And if Brady's in front of the net, man, and then, the, I mean, you don't have Timmy on there, and that's probably why it is the second unit. But mm. I just think you could get a little more power play value out of him if he was better utilized this season but all in all yeah you're right 77 points is what he needed going into the year to get to that elusive thousand point plateau in his career he's either gonna do it the last game this year the first game next year. he's gonna be (laughs) right right in tight getting pretty at 40 points in 46 games the fact is 13 multi-point games this year I got yeah. him on my fantasy team and have all season. Always got to get that one token senator. Yeah. But I'm oh, glad yeah. he grew because, man, he's also had a few games where he has seven, eight shots on goal. So yeah. he, he brings it, man. That guy's the whole package. And and uh, I love that he signed for three years because if it was one, I don't know, maybe he'd go <laughs> ring chasing everywhere. But he's locked in. He's here with his family. And I think he knows that there's some road bumps right now and maybe some changes that have to be made off ice. Yes. But he, I don't see him as – being a guy who's requesting a trade this summer, I still yeah. think we'll see him back in the same kind of second line role that he played in so well this year. And say what you will about the plus minus statistic indicative of whatever you want it to be. The man is at minus four this year on a team that has obviously struggled to keep the puck out of their net and at times definitely score goals. The fact that he's there tells me a lot about what he's done and what he's meant to this team overall. Boys, Thank you so much for joining us. That's Ross and Brandon of the Locked On Sends podcast. We're going to have them back on all the time. Make sure you check them out across all platforms you find your favorite and hottest content. Boys, good luck the rest of the year. Sincerely, from one Leafs fan to a Senators fan, I genuinely mean that. Thank you again for joining us on today's episode. We appreciate it. I might have to take a week off of Twitter if Friday night doesn't go the way uh, the way we need it because I've been a little vocal about Matt Murray and, and heard some some takes back. But I'm all for it, man. I love the banter. Uh, someone here in Winnipeg said, he goes, do you think it's weird covering the Sens when living in Winnipeg? I was like, dude, I used to produce Leafs games. Like, this there is you nothing. Go. <laughs> like twice a year. This is nothing, fellas. So, I know. Uh, appreciate you guys. We follow along with you guys as well. And uh, the advice is certainly – 
help Pilsy in fantasy, not me so much this year. <laughs> Pilsy's always top three in the league, man. He, he's coming for your guys' jobs. This guy's just a cow cow in fantasy hockey. Sure, we but, have you guys on. No, we appreciate uh, you asking us to join. We'll do it anytime. And, uh, yeah, keep it up, man, because you're coming into fantasy playoff races and mm-hmm. everything. Yes, so, hey, you guys are an important tool for, for many, and, and keep grinding. We appreciate you. Thanks again to the Locked On Senators boys for hopping on here and giving some insight into what's going on with the Ottawa Senators this season. But we also have to thank our partner, Athletic Greens. Our product of AG1 is literally the best. I started taking AG1 because, again, definitely wanted some more energy throughout the day, and I hate taking the big pills and vitamins in the morning. Absolutely sucks. And I wanted to see what all the hype was about with AG1 and Athletic Greens. So what exactly is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics to help you start the day off right. The special special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, your focus, and even your aging. And Athletic Greens was created by the founder when he experienced, again, a ton of hot gelt, uh, uh, gut health problems and issues and ended up on a very complicated supplement routine to recover from it, which cost him over $100 a day. That's way too expensive. And AG1 is perfectly priced for you. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Again, it's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. I personally like to take it in the morning right when I wake up. And there's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy for you, Athletic Greens is giving you a a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hi, this is Walker Mayo, one of the local hosts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Instead of hearing me right now, we could be talking about your business and helping you reach local, passionate sports fans just like yourself. Unlike any other podcast, Locked On gives your local company the unique ability to reach local podcast listeners. If your business wants to connect with local sports fans that are well-educated with disposable income, then let's put your company right here on this Locked On podcast. Local fans love to support local businesses. Text the word ADVERTISING to 33777 or visit LockedOnPodcast.com slash advertising and let us know who you are. Our team will assist you to achieve advertising success with Locked On. Once again, text the word ADVERTISING to 33777 or visit LockedOnPodcast.com slash advertising. We look forward to hearing from you. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on podcast platforms, including YouTube. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. Flip and I appreciate all the love and all the support. And now let's get down to the end of the episode. Big Mm. time bets. We have gone a little long on this episode, Flip. So let's make this quick and easy for everybody out there with the games on Tuesday or Wednesday Mm -hmm. night. Big time bets. Let's start us off, Flip. What are your three picks of the night? Tuesday night steal. It's a juicy board. Lots to look at. And, you know, there is a lot of tough games here. That was my takeaway. We're not going to break it down in detail because the detail of the show was focused around this Ottawa Senators situation, Josh Norris, and otherwise. Shout to the Locked On Sens boys. But I got to look at this very quickly, Steele. I'm taking three winners. I'm keeping it simple. Winnipeg Jets head into Nashville tonight. We know that this team Hey-o. is... Yeah, thank you. Stay with me now. The under has gone 15 games out of the last 20 between these two. I was going to start to lean under, and then I got scared up off of it when I looked up into this Winnipeg numbers. 10-3 and three over their last 13. Seven wins in their last nine games against Nashville. That includes... Five wins out of their last six trips to Nashville. First pick of the night. Jets on the money line. This feels like a good spot for Winnipeg. Hello. Side bet here. Predators on the money line is my first pick. Let's put a 10 on it. Let's put a 10 on it. You you know, you've again, you've had my number this season with the side bets, but we know the Predators are a second half team. I'm going to take the Predators on the money line plus 100. Uh, I think you're getting some good odds. Good odds. You know, the, the trend is not there with the Nashville Predators, but... 
I like them in this spot at home. My yeah. second pick of the night. I'm going to take the Sharks on the money line plus 130. Side against the bet Red number Wings. two, baby. Side, oh, we got a couple side bets here. I'm taking the Sharks on the money line. Look, the Red Wings have not looked good. They have not been a good team. It's Sharks true. are, look, the Sharks defense is one story, but the offense is there. They're scoring goals. And I like their offense with Timo Meyer, even Eric Carlson, who can jump in on the play. I'm going to take the Sharks on the money line plus 130. But my lock of the night, this one a little spicy as well. I'll take the Ducks on the money line, oh. plus 120 oh. against the Arizona Coyotes. We yeah. know we know that a couple of games, you know, maybe once every two weeks, the Ducks can kind of take one away from a team. And the Coyotes, again, are another team closer to the bottom of the league. That's my lock of the night. All three teams are underdogs, but I like them in these situations. I almost thought we were going to have three side bets on our hands, <laughs> my friend. My second bet is the Detroit Red Wings, like I said, at home. Uh, that's my – I'm going. let's throw another 10 on the side bet angle here. San Jose only two wins in their last nine on the road. They're a bad road team. Only two wins in their last seven into Detroit, and they have only one win in their last six games. Look, these are a very tough schedule, and maybe it made yeah. sense that we left this betting breakdown short today, Steel, because if I were <laughs> y'all listening out there, I might ease up off of it tonight – Save my couple of bucks for the rest of the week when there's maybe some more advantageous matchups to be sprinkling yeah. sprinkling on. Because when I explain my lock of the night, you're going to understand where I'm coming from in terms of tough <laughs> angles tonight. But Detroit on the money line, minus 144. That's my second pick in addition to the Jets. This also just feels like a night for a little parlay. Add some of these long, shorter odds or maybe even longer odds and dial the bet back and just make it a little parlay yeah. night. Chicago rolls into the Vancouver Canucks situation steal. <laughs> and you might be looking at me going flip. Why are you even going near this game with a 10 foot pole? And I just think the recent numbers that I've seen between these two teams, Vancouver has the numbers eight wins in their last 10 games against Chicago overall. This team is a mess for sure, but they have good numbers against the Blackhawks. Five and one in their last six games at home against the Blackhawks as well. I just think they, they're they going to be a mess the rest of the season. If they're yeah. going to get a big win, it's going to be tonight on the heels. They didn't get one for Brucey when he was cut. They're going to get one tonight for Brucey. Canucks on the money line laying heavy juice minus 220 right now. Again, included yeah. in a parlay, but honestly, Steele, very, very tough night. But I like the Canucks as my lock of the night on some an emotional type level. That was my initial thought. Don't even come near it with a 10-foot pole here. I'm might, not even going to make a right. side bet with you because I just stay – I'm staying away from this Two game. side bets okay. on tap. Two side bets for the first time, I believe, on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. There Thank is. you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Again, available Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love and all the support. And thank you so much again for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace. Did you watch every NHL game last night? Of course not. That's impossible. So Locked On brings you Locked On Game to Game NHL. With Locked On Game to Game NHL, we take you inside every arena to every game and give you the Locked On local experts' insight. And by the end, it's as though you were at every game. Find Locked On Game to Game NHL on the Locked On NHL feed and follow today. Locked On Game to Game NHL, taking you to every arena for every game with the local experts. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Walker Mayo, one of the local hosts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Instead of hearing me right now, we could be talking about your business and helping you reach local, passionate sports fans just like yourself. Unlike any other podcast, Locked On gives your local company the unique ability to reach local podcast listeners. If your business wants to connect with local sports fans that are well-educated with disposable income, then let's put your company right here on this Locked On podcast. Local fans love to support local businesses. Text the word advertising to 33777 or visit LockedOnPodcast.com slash advertising and let us know who you are. Our team will assist you to achieve advertising success with Locked On. Once again, 
text the word advertising to 33777 or visit lockedonpodcast.com slash advertising. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to this Locked On podcast ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today.